Hello guys, dolls, and prospective volunteers. We're back at Keystone Heritage Park, one of my favorite places to spend the evening. So this is Stonehenge. Well, I call it Stonehenge. I'm sure there's better nicknames for it. It is one of our fountains, but because it is closing time, I did already turn this fountain off. Hopefully you will make it to the park during the day when the fountain is running and be soothed by the tinkling sounds of the water. So behind me, this is known as our medicinal garden. In this medicinal garden, which we volunteers, who I hope will be joining us soon, um, and for long-term projects, one of the things I'd like to do is obviously plant more native and some imported medicinal plants. Plants that are important to our culture over the past 4,000 years, más o menos. I would like more medicinal plants in here. For now, one of the plants, which is really a tree or a tree slash shrub, is this. Texas mountain laurel. There are several other mountain laurels and they are not at all related. That is why we say Texas mountain laurel when referring to that tree. And I will give you a little of its history as a medicinal but not really medicinal because it's actually poisonous. I'll give you its history in another video. Here, we have some Russian sage. It also is not really from Russia. It is a Asian plant, I believe. I think um, maybe Afghanistan. Yeah, in, in that area, okay. So I believe that's where it's from, but the person who named it is Russian. So the scientific name for it is blah blah name and something, you know, because the scientific names are always two parts. The Latin scientific names are always two parts. So it's a Russian scientist. I promise that the next video I will look up this information so that you have it. So that is definitely medicinal back there. We have an oak tree. We have some Salvia Clevelandii, which you know is one of my favorite bushes. Just that aroma is amazing. It's also known as the chaparral sage. And then see the little green fluffy stuff over like taller, it's taller than this than the Cleve Clevelandii. That is sand sage. Now sand sage does also have some medicinal qualities. Um, you can use it as a tea. It's in the mint family. It does soothe the tummy. There's other qualities or um, uses for it, which again in another video because I can only talk so long. This is the sage that most of us are familiar with, a purple sage. And I am reading two more pages of The Little Prince for you tonight. This is our culinary garden. Right now our culinary garden mostly has rosemary, a couple of different varieties of rosemary, some more sand sage. But I would like to plant more. So again, volunteer opportunity maybe some basil, some thyme, some oregano, cilantro. Yes, more items that we use in our local um, cuisine. So this is the culinary garden. Volunteers, please help me make this a more diverse culinary garden. Medicinal garden. Again, volunteers, please help me make this a more robust medicinal garden. 
Stonehenge. I just love this. I really love that fountain. And that is one of the 12 traveler statues. But we're here because like um, I've said, I want to do reflections, I guess. I don't know what I'm doing. Anyway, I feel that being close to water is a place of reflection. So, we've already read the first four pages. So let's see, let's see. So here we are, back to the little prince. The best story ever told. It took me a long time to understand where he came from, the little prince, who asked me so many questions, never seemed to hear the ones I asked him. It was things he said quite at random that bit by bit explaining everything. For instance, when he first caught sight of my airplane, I won't draw my airplane, that would be much too complicated for me. He asked, what's that thing over there? It's not a thing. It flies. It's an airplane. My airplane. And I was proud to tell him I could fly. Then he exclaimed, What? You fell out of the sky? Yes, I said modestly. Oh, that's funny. And the little prince broke into a lovely peal of laughter, which annoyed me a good deal. I like my misfortunes to be taken seriously. Then he added, so you fell out of the sky too. What planet are you from? That was when I had my first clue to the mystery of his presence. And I questioned him sharply. Do you come from another planet? But he made no answer. He shook his little head, still staring at my airplane. Of course, that couldn't have brought you from very far and he fell into a reverie that lasted a long while. Then taking my sheep out of his pocket, he plunged into contemplation of his treasure. You can imagine how intrigued I was by this hint about other planets. I tried to learn more. Where do you come from, little fellow? Where is this where I live of yours? Where will you be taking my sheep? After a thoughtful silence, he answered, The good thing about the crate you've given me is that he can use it for a house after dark. Of course, and if you're good, I'll give you a rope to tie him up during the day and a stake to tie him to. This proposition seemed to shock the little prince. Tie him up? <laughs> what a funny idea! But if you don't tie him up, he'll wander off somewhere and get lost. My friend burst out laughing again. Where would he go? Anywhere, straight ahead. Then the little prince remarked quite seriously. Even if he did, everything's so small where I live. And he added, perhaps a little sadly, straight ahead, you can't go very far. That was how I learned a second very important thing which was that the planet he came from was hardly bigger than a house. That couldn't surprise me much. I knew very well that except for the huge planets like Earth, Jupiter, Mars, and Venus, which have been given names, there are hundreds of others that are sometimes so small that it's very difficult to see them through a telescope. When an astronomer discovers one of them, he gives it a number instead of a name. For instance, he would call it Asteroid 325. I have serious reasons to believe that the planet the little prince came from is Asteroid B612. This asteroid has been sighted only once by telescope in 1909 by a Turkish astronomer who had then made a formal demonstration of his discovery at an international astronomical congress, but no one had believed him on account of the way he was dressed. Grown-ups are like that. Okay, my friends, I have to finish closing the garden. Thank you so much for joining me on 
a little more of this journey. Hopefully you will tune in and we'll read more of this beautiful book together. And hopefully I will see you soon volunteering, like maybe this Saturday. I don't know what the date is, but you know, I don't even know what the date is today. I'm so mixed up. But anyway, hopefully I will see you this Saturday. Have a great evening. Ciao, ciao.